If you don't recognize the music in the background of this video right now, then according to basically every website on the internet, you don't know one of the most famous pieces of classical piano music ever written, and I'm kind of confused and impressed that you've ended up on a YouTube channel which is all about classical piano music. See, Moonlight Sonata's claim to fame is not just that everyone knows it, it's that everyone knows almost all of it. This slow movement all kind of sounds the same, so I could drop you basically anywhere in it, and you'd probably nod your head and go, yep, sounds like Moonlight Sonata. Then it has a fast movement that's also instantly recognisable, and basically a go-to favourite for pianists who want to show off a little. And not that I would show off or anything, but I heard there's a pretty cool recording of it on this channel. Anyway, I've skated over a little problem. Moonlight Sonata actually has three movements to it, and we've only just covered two of them. The slow first movement, and the speedy third movement. So, what does the second movement sound like? And why do you probably not know the answer to that question? See, basically no one knows what the second movement sounds like. It's not famous at all. Maybe... maybe it just sucks. Maybe Beethoven fumbled the middle section of a masterpiece and everyone collectively decided to pretend it never happened. Or maybe there's something deeper to explain this gap in public knowledge. And to get into that, I'm going to start by asking a question I'm sure you've thought of at least once. What the hell even is a sonata anyway? Back in the day, before cool and funky instruments were widely produced, a lot of music was simply written to be sung. And because musicians are extremely creative at naming things, a lot of this vocal music got put under the name cantata, whose root meaning is to sing. But then cool and funky instruments got pretty popular, so we needed a new name for the music that wasn't sung. So in contrast to cantata, we got the name sonata, whose root meaning is literally to make sound. Obviously that's not very descriptive, and as we start nearing the classical era of Haydn and Mozart, the word sonata starts taking on a more complicated meaning. Instrumental music is taking the spotlight more and more, so now the sonata has grown into a piece with three movements, which for variety go fast, slow, then fast. At this point in time, sonatas were front-loaded. The first movement was usually considered the most musically important, and was basically a thesis statement for the rest of the movements to follow on from. This first movement was considered so important to the sonata that the internal structure of the first movement itself is what we now call sonata form. The other movements could be pretty interesting in their own right, but that would be more of a bonus and less of a requirement. In fact, a lot of the time, the third movement would be less of a grand finale and more of a short ABA dance movement, like a minuet and trio. But then Beethoven comes along and starts shaking things up a bit, because Big Beat was the original edgelord and he does what he wants. In this case, he ups the ante to a whole four movements now, going fast, slow, medium fast, and fast. I guess Beethoven just thought, instead of choosing between a short dance movement and a proper finale, why not have both? So Beethoven made movement 3 the dance movement and added on movement 4 as the more satisfying finale. The other change he's making is that his sonatas are end heavy. His finales are often the longest and most exciting movement of his sonatas, and the longer 4 part format gives us more time to build up properly to this banger of an ending. You can see a kind of acceleration across the tempi of movements 2, 3, and 4, which really shows that the momentum of the whole sonata is now leading up to the finale. This four movement structure pretty much became the new standard after this, and for most people, creating a new standard for one of the most important genres of classical music would be enough, but Big Beat didn't stop there. Across his whopping 31 piano sonatas, he does a bunch of experiments with the layout, and Moonlight is one of his most daring. He takes the four movement sonata structure and essentially cuts out the first movement entirely. Now this is a risky move because it means we've lost the exciting start to the sonata and we're dumping the audience straight into the slow movement, which typically ends up being the least well-known movement of a sonata. But Beethoven pulls it off by putting his all into writing the slow movement and making sure it's as magical and entrancing as it can be. And history has shown that he succeeded in starting off strong, even with a slow movement. But with such an intense slow movement to start the sonata, and an even more intense third movement finale, the sonata is in desperate need of something a little more low-key to balance it out. So the dance movement, which even traditionally is meant to take a kind of backseat, takes an even further backseat in Moonlight Sonata. Actually, Beethoven doesn't even put it in the backseat, he just stuffs it right into the car boot. 
In most print editions of this piece, movement 1 will take about 4 pages of music, movement 3 will take about 9 pages, and movement 2 takes less than a single page. So structurally, Moonlight Sonata's second movement is just a little breath, a transition, a musical comma. It was never meant to take the spotlight. It's not a bad movement. In fact, it's pretty much perfect for its intended purpose of being an interlude. So, asking why the second movement of Moonlight Sonata isn't as famous as the others is kinda like asking why a 13 second intro track where Billie Eilish takes out her Invisalign isn't as famous as Bad Guy. It just wasn't the point. It was never designed to be famous. That future was meant for the other movements, and this one will forever live in their tall, dark shadows. Well, now I feel kinda bad. I recorded movements 1 and 3 almost a year ago now, and as some people have noticed, I still haven't done a recording of movement 2. So I think it's about time I changed that. The last section of this video will be my recording of and commentary on the second movement of Moonlight Sonata. I've tried to give it as much love as I can, and despite its small, understated nature, I hope you'll do the same. Enjoy! I might just have to subscribe to this dashing number. Check out his Discord and Patreon in the description. Can we go now, please?